Hey, I'm Travis, and I'm a noob just like you. That makes me the perfect candidate to host this series called GitHub for Noobs. To GitHub for Noobs. Last week we talked about the history of Git and GitHub. Spoiler alert, they're different things. This week, we're going to look at how Git is used, a few common functions, and answer the question, what role does the company GitHub play in this workflow? Let's look at a run-of-the-mill project that uses Git. Here's a project folder. This is what we refer to as a repository, or a repo, if you're trying to sound like one of them cool kids. Now, imagine that we've been working on this project for a while. We're done working on a new feature, and we're ready to save. But this is not the same as just saving the file and being done. This save that we want to do is more like taking a snapshot of the entire project as it is at this time. This snapshot is called a commit. Commits are cool because not only can you write a comment on it and share that snapshot with your friends and collaborators, but you can return to that snapshot at any time. Commits are really what give Git most of its power. Now, imagine that we're skipping along our happy little self down this development path all the live long day, and we're making these commits the whole time, but suddenly we get this crazy idea. What if, I don't know, we want to develop a feature that makes it easy for dogs to log in? It could be anything. We can create something called a branch. A branch is essentially a new development path that we can follow as long as we like without ever really messing up with our original plans. If we decide against our dog idea, no biggie. We can just switch back to the master branch and carry on as if nothing had ever happened. So far we've learned about repositories, commits, branches, and master branches. It's not that scary. This is you. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. All right, let's go. Let's keep on going. All right, uh, let's say you have your own repo and you're making commits and your buddy says to you, hey dude, you made a few typos in your code, but don't worry, I'll fix it. Your buddy can now make his own branch and then fix the errors himself. After he's all done, he can ask you to pull in his changes by using something called a pull request. A pull request is a report of all the changes made, and if you like them all, you can accept the request and pull in his changes. Now, that branch is merged into the master branch. Using this workflow has a lot of advantages. It allows you to explore new ideas in a non-destructive way and invite new collaborators to contribute code. It provides a working history of all of your code, and these are all fantastic things. But if all of this is Git, where does GitHub come into the mix? Well, calm down, noob, because I'm getting to that. GitHub is built to be the perfect place to host the repository. When we put our repo on GitHub, we then have a centralized place to distribute the code from. A GitHub workflow might look like this. I have my repo on GitHub. I pull the latest version to my local machine and make a few edits. I commit my edits, and then I push from my local machine to the repo hosted on GitHub. Now that my updated code is on GitHub, it is easier to invite friends to share the code or distribute something that I made to the world. Now pretend that I made a little plugin or library or framework or whatever and you come across it. You like it, but you need it to be a little different for your purpose. GitHub allows you to fork my repository and make the changes you desire. A fork is different than a branch in that a branch is still a version of the code contained inside my repo. A fork creates an entirely new repo for you to manage on your own. The fork is now a part of your GitHub account. Now there may come a time when you think that I might appreciate your changes and you request that I pull in new commits from your fork. And that can work too. This is how large open source projects are done. Some repos have thousands of people forking the code and trying to improve it. And this is the magic of GitHub, scale. GitHub also offers other nice features like a graphical user interface, project wikis, bug trackers, being able to make comments on pull requests or even a single line of code. GitHub even offers a free, simple, static web page hosting solution. Fantastic. There is a ton that I've left out of this video, but it should be enough to paint in your mind a pretty clear picture 
of what is Git and GitHub and why they are so important to modern web development. This video is created using a camera, a microphone, and a copy of Apple Keynote. And it's supported by the patrons of the channel. These wonderful ladies and gents pledge a dollar amount of their choosing for every video that I create. In turn, there's a few perks. They get to watch the videos early, they get to see a few extra videos, and they have access to Dev Tips Chat where they meet each other and make friends, work together, and help each other solve problems. It, it's really awesome to see. Find out more at patreon.com slash devtips, and there's a link in the description below. Next week, we're gonna be looking at how to get started on your own applications using the free application created by GitHub. And until I see you then, my friends, keep on hacking. Keep on hacking. <laughs> Is used. Ugh. This week, we're gonna look at how Git is used. I feel used. So Git right now. Who's calling me? My father-in-law said keep on hacking. I'm not even joking. Can you tap on that? Can, you can't see it. You can't see it. Forget it. Just trust me.